creativity. And so it relates to our rational thinking. It not only relates to our thinking, but it relates to the knowledge which comes from our thinking. It also relates to the sort of teachings to which we've been adhering. Religious teachings, philosophical teachings, teachings some of which may be from authorized beings or from people who are not authorized. And this, amongst Americans, as generally in the West, is a center tremendously affected, where we've gained <coughs> knowledge, so-called, from our unauthorized teachers. And as I said, this center has the capacity to revolve. And so you can see how it can affect. If we take the teachings of unauthorized people, it can affect the whole of what we call the void area. Because this area relates to the teachings of the great masters, the primordial masters that have come on this earth from time to time to keep us in the center. And any deviation from that takes us away from pure knowledge of the divine. We have to be terribly careful of this. And after realization, you have the power of discrimination. You have the ability within your own central nervous system, system to discern what books you should read, what knowledge you should and should not hang on to. And you can distinguish between myth and reality. And this is a gift which is given to us after realization. This center is the center of our seeking, the center where each one of us are expressing at various stages in our various lives our own seeking. So, in our most primitive state we've been seeking perhaps money. Perhaps even before that, more primitive urges. Power, later. But none of those trips gave us any satisfaction until we came to the point in our various searchings where we knew that there had to be something beyond and this is where it's come from this is where the seeking of something beyond comes the center the heart center is the center of security it's the center where dwells the spirit it's the center where we begin to know that we are our spirit but we're not conscious of that until we get our realization, we are not conscious of being our spirit. And yet this is the very nature of the search, to become our spirit. The center is the center of collectivity. It's the center where we begin to know the greatness of God. This is the center where we begin to look beyond this little microcosm called I, and know that there is something, an all-pervading God, which loves and thinks and integrates. And this is the center where we perceive this. And we perceive it after realization in collectivity. You see, when you get your vibrations, you start to feel your own centers. These centers which are indicated here on the coding system. On your own fingertips. You can put your attention on others and feel whether another person has a little damage on the chakras. Or as often happens, we can feel for the whole room where the main catch is for this audience. That's how it is. We become collectively conscious because we're plugged into that source after realization. This is what it is. Then the center between the eyes is the center which was given to us and awakened and enlightened by Christ. Now we have to enlighten it within each one of us. Not just to say that we're Christian, not just to say our prayers, not just to believe that everybody's good, not just to have these wishy-washy ideas which so many of us have within the Christian church, but to actually know the message of Christ, which was the resurrection, that the Spirit is eternal, that we have to be forgiving, 
not talk about forgiveness, but be forgiving. This is what it's all about. And this is what Sahaja Yoga is all about. It's about becoming. It's an actualization. And when it happens, the whole past existence, the complexities, the confusions, are just dissolved. This energy, when it rises, puts you in touch with the ultimate. It neutralizes all the damage. It dissolves any of the afflictions that have occurred. It turns people who have had psychological illnesses into perfectly normal people. It heals the physical body. Your material well-being improves. And you just enjoy, in a very real way, yourself and everyone else around you. You look at the whole drama of life rather than become involved in the drama. All these things start to happen, and it happens, happens. You don't get lectures about it, you just go about doing it, and that's what it's all about. So without any further ado, I'll introduce to the new people our mother, Mataji Nemala Devi, again, and to the people who've already gained their realization, take the vibrations more and clear your chakras still more. This opportunity will come tonight and tomorrow night, and then Mataji will be going to Houston. Two more nights, yes. <coughs> Where are we? Tuesday, so there's only Wednesday left. One day more. <coughs> Tonight and tomorrow. <coughs> Dr. Warren has <coughs> clearly told you about the subtle body within us. And we should think why the subtle body was created. What was the need to create this body with us and how it was created? These, all these centers are the milestones of our evolution. And as we started growing higher and higher, developing higher and higher awareness, we developed all these centers one by one. And at the human level is this center where the man raised his head upward. Still why? What was the need to create a human being? Supposing I am trying to get some nut bolts and things and try to fix them up, make it into a good instrument. One would ask, what are you doing? Why, why are you assembling all this? What are you making out of it? After all, it cannot be a waste. Why such a special thing has been made? For what purpose? And that is what we have not yet discovered, what is our purpose. But if you go to any of the scriptures, you will find out that they have said, all of them have said, that you have to become yourself. That there is all-pervading power around us. Now this all-pervading power we cannot see. It exists. As they say, if you have to believe it or not. But we should find out if there is such a power or not. For example, if I say that there are lots of beautiful pictures and beautiful music in this area, you won't believe. But if I get you a television set and if I plug it to the main, you start seeing that it is receiving something. In the same way, when you become connected with the whole, then what should happen to you is that you start feeling that all-pervading power. This is self-knowledge and is written at length very clearly by many people in the Indian scriptures. The reason was the people who came in the other parts of the world had such a tough time. They were not given any chance to say anything much about it. 
hardly they could utter anything and they were crucified, poisoned, beaten up, tortured, all kinds of problems they were given. So this has to happen within us that we should feel this all-pervading power. The other day we had two persons from a guru and they said, how can it be only this cool breeze that is coming in us is something. For a human being to conceive something about God is to go to scriptures which have lasted for all these ages to find out. One of, the, one of the authorities you can have. Now it is said there is all-pervading power in all the scriptures. Now supposing by going to somebody he says, I give you power called so-called Shakti path and you just start jumping like a mad horse or a, like a mad monkey and you say it is Shakti path and you have vigorous movements and all kinds of acrobats you fall into and you believe that this is Shakti and then by the time it is over you are exhausted and finished. How can that be a Shakti path? The idea of energy within us is not horse energy by which a horse can run very fast, that's physical energy we should understand, that's just a prana shakti, part of this, just part of this part. It's just the physical energy. Now human beings don't need a horse power, do they? You have already got big cars here which have tremendous horse powers. You don't have to become horses now or bulls or some sort of an animal. <laughs> we, our idea of a superman is that he will have such powers that he can lift the whole building and throw away somewhere. All such absurd ideas should be given up and should understand that physical well-being so that you can feel the blessings, the blessings of your spirit. Blessing word an animal doesn't understand. But a human being must understand that when he gets spiritually endowed and spiritually blessed, then first thing he should have is a physical well-being. That doesn't mean that he becomes a wrestler. That doesn't mean that his body will be so built that if he slaps somebody, the another person will die. On the contrary, he becomes such a powerful personality that if somebody slaps him for him, it's nothing, it's all nonsense. So the concept of human being can be from the kind of life they lead, the kind of media they face, the kind of identifications a society has, all kinds of things could be there. For example, for Japanese children, I was amazed. For them the idea of a superman is that he should look like a ghost. He should be at least ten times bigger than a normal human being. And that's what they think they should achieve because I studied their media, especially their cinema and most of them have produced these phantom ideas. We don't become phantom, that is one thing one should. Neither we become agitated. How can we become agitated? We are in bliss and peace. If you start just gesticulating and sort of shouting and screaming like mad, then how can that be a Shakti path? It's madness. You are possessed. It's possession on you. Anywhere you go, anybody who's possessed, you go and see lunatics, they do the same. You pay these people to become lunatics to believe that they have given you a power is absurd. Now the power that has come, going to come to us has to give us a well-being. These people, if you look at them, they are sickly people, they are reclusive, they are actually frightened, some of them are even frightened of a garment as I say. 
So, the realization if it comes to you, the chakras which are placed on your fingers should be enlightened minimum of minimum and that you should be able to feel this all pervading power that is there. This is self not, this is Atma. <coughs> Buddha means to know, to know, to feel that power even after realization. When you go a little bit more and you start seeing comma like power, this just like you can say uh, small sparkles of commas, you can see clearly. You can also see the Kundalini's of it. You can also see a good soul and a bad soul like dots. You can clearly start seeing once you get your realization, when you are in that level you start seeing. But if you get possessed, say you are on the left hand side, then what will you see? You will see ghosts walking into your house, you will say your room is lifted up, suddenly you will find your body is taken away and you are somewhere hanging. All these are very, very dangerous things about which people are not aware. Never go near these people and these people. Recently there is a big disease that has started, which is a very dangerous disease, I do not know if you people are aware of it or not. That when small children are sleeping in the daytime, say they are in Switzerland and say their mother may be in America, the timings are different that time it may be the night, here it may be the daytime. And the mother goes to a clairvoyance and says that I would like to speak to my child, all right. So the child is sleeping and this clairvoyance gets a soul around and asks the soul to get the soul of the child. And the mother can hear the voice of the child sitting down here. Oh, and she thinks even without any telecommunication I am talking to this child. And it is very common that the child dies in sleep and the mother does not know. Because the soul has to return and if it does not return properly, if something goes wrong in its return, the child suffers. And also the soul suffers in any case which moves about. And we go headlong into it and we destroy it. They are very, very cunning people, I tell you. Yesterday, those two people who were discussing with me, arguing with me, they told me that their guru thinks very highly of me. And they also, people I have heard, they told me that our guru says that you don't go to her because she will only accept you if you are absolutely purified and we have to purify. All this is nonsense. These people are just playing tricks on your mind. The purification takes when the Kundalini rises. She purifies you. Because you come to know about yourself when the Kundalini rises, where is the problem? And once you know the problem, you correct yourself. Kundalini awakening gives you the judgment of your own self. As if you are going in the car, and you get out of the car to see what's wrong with the car. It is very simple when the Kundalini rises to correct you. For example, supposing there is a person who smokes too much. I may tell him, don't smoke, don't smoke, all that. He get tired, run away, won't see me again. There is no need to tell you don't smoke. Once you get yourself realization, you won't smoke at all. Little willpower will work it out in the first instant. But even if it doesn't act in the first instant, gradually we will just drop it out because of transmutation that takes place. So we have to see that when we say we have got some sort of a shakti or a power within us, we should become master of ourselves, of our greed, of our desires, and our aggressive nature. We should become the master of that unless and until that happens to us. How should we believe that it is any power? 
and that we should feel this all pervading blissful power around us. Unless and until you are awakened to that, how can you see? <coughs> Unless and until your eyes are open, how will you see that? And that awakening is enlightenment. Now you are so beautifully made inside, see, already you are made like that. Already you are made like that. Except that if you have not ruined it by breaking it completely, you are there. Is made for which you have not paid anything. You have put in no effort, no jumping, nothing. You have become a human being from a monkey without cutting your tails. Automatically, spontaneously. And if you have to become anything higher, you will become spontaneously. The only difference is that at this stage of evolution you have been given your freedom to choose. Because at a higher level when you move, you have to be free people. And that freedom is to be respected. This is one point. And the second point is that your realization has to take place in your human awareness. You should know. When you became a human being from a monkey state, you never knew how you became. But now you must know, because you must know that there is God and you must know that His power is flowing. That's why one should understand what we should expect when we get our Realization. Of course, as we said, that once you start getting the power within you, once it starts working, then you can learn about it, how you manifest it, how you use it. First, when electricity was discovered, nobody knew that it will have so many uses. But then you discover how many uses it has. But here you don't even have to discover it. If it is told that this has this use, you just try and see for yourself it has or not. It's like you get, say, a car, you purchase a car and they give you everything in writing. Now try this one. <coughs> if you press this button, that will happen. If you press that button, that will happen. In the same way, the whole thing is decoded, <coughs> completely decoded for you to use this power within you, to maneuver it, to handle it, and to manifest it. We have no self-esteem. If we had self-esteem, we should understand that God has created you with such difficulties, whatever it is. Thousands of years, thousands of years it has taken for you become a human being. And that you must be something special, much higher than animals, no doubt about it, and that it should happen to you. It is He who loves you. It is He who is the Father, is compassion, love, and the greatest Father that you could think of who wants to share, who wants to give His kingdom to you, must have that self-esteem that you are a human being. I think somehow, perhaps because of these conditionings you have had, you think, how can we get Realization? So easy, you can't believe it. You don't want to believe it. You think, how can we be realized so easily? Because everything you do in life, you think you have to struggle. But there are so many things you don't do with struggle, like you get a fruit without any struggle. Even if you breathe, all your autonomous nervous system works without any struggle. You eat, and the food is digested automatically. You don't have to struggle for it. You don't have to jump or do jogging or anything like that. It just works out. We should understand it is the blessing. It's the blessing. People have become so much science oriented that they have forgotten that science also is a blessing. Science is a blessing now. For example, see this photograph of mine here. I had gone to a village 
and a village which had no electricity, nothing, and a very old building of a school. I was sitting outside. And the photograph caught on these falling rays. The photograph. Your camera has caught it. I went to Hong Kong on a television and they asked me, because the person who was owning the television, his daughter, invited me and she said, Mother, can we ask people to put their hands towards you, you like this? I said, all right, let's try. And they got Realization. So many of them, they wrote letters that we got Realization on the television. Even on the telephone you can give Realization, on the telephone you can see it. All this science has created it for Sahajogi and for Sahaja. It is a blessing to communicate the message. But people are so blind, so blind that they think all this has been given to us make, to make more money and to create more plastics. <laughs> they cannot believe that this is to communicate about God's love, His compassion and that security that is from the most loving part you could think of. It is beyond human conception to understand His compassion. I accept. But still, you see compassion in life. And if He is the source of compassion, then what must be His level of compassion? Now, as it is, He has told you all about this quite a lot, and I have also yesterday told you and he said that I have only one more lecture to cover the whole subject, is I don't know what's going to happen, <laughs> how far I can go with uh, people in New York. I think we may have one more lecture when I come back, one more lecture might be. But today I think I should talk to you about the Self, first of all, then about all these things will be a better idea. Now what is the Self? Self is the reflection <coughs> of God Almighty. First, let us see how the creation came into being. In the beginning or in the end, because there is no beginning and there is no end. And you cannot say hell came first came first or the egg, or something like that. Start it at a point, you see, where it was just all quiet. And the whole creation becomes anthropic, or we can say it is sleeping. Everything is sleeping. Like we sleep, so the whole world sleeps for that is the state as called as Parabrahma in Sanskrit language. It's the first. Now, in the Bible, whatever is written is very telescopic and very fast. I, to understand it, I'm just trying to enlarge it. That wherever are the missing points, you can put them up. Now, the first state is of Parabrahma. Is the state where everything is not manifest. Everything is sleeping. Then this Parabrahma becomes aware of itself that it awakens, as we awaken. Then it starts manifesting. All the awareness, the consciousness, of that starts accumulating on the periphery and the center remains as the subject. The periphery now is the power of that subject. So we have the subject, the God Almighty, he is called as Sadashiva and his power, that is the primordial power, 
In Sanskrit is called as Adi Shakti and we call it as Holy Ghost in the Bible. So they separate. I mean it's a some drawings have to be made, but doesn't matter. Now I'll just tell you in short. And this spectator, this Sadashiva, this all God Almighty starts watching his own power. Now we cannot understand the complete concord and complete understanding, complete oneness and integration between these two entities. God Almighty and His power. It's like the sun and His rays, or sunshine, moon and moon light. But even more than that, nothing can come into the kingdom. They are absolutely in union with each other, and everything works simultaneously. In human relationship, no husband wife can be like that. It's impossible. Then the spectator, Sadashiva, forces his power, which forms an entity, to create. First she refuses and then he gives her a, I mean in a very poetic way it's called a lasya, means a nudge. And that gives the first sound, Omkar. That's the first logos, the first sound, the word. That's the word, he says. He creates. Then she starts creating. She creates, she divides herself. First of all, she is nothing but the power of desire. Because first it is to be desired. It's the God's desire. She exists as a desire. Unless and until there is desire, nothing can work out. So she is the power of desire, like we have also the power of desire within us. Then from this desire comes the other power which makes it an act. So the other power of action comes in. These two powers, bring forth a system in between themselves, like left and right, which starts giving sustenance to things that are being created. As I told you that carbon has four val valencies, it's a tetravalent. I don't know if you people have studied chemistry or not, there's a chemical periodic table if you see. It's all divided so beautifully. And it is so well arranged that one has to believe that there is a great juggler or a great planner who has done it, otherwise it's not possible. It's so well arranged. The whole valency system and everything is so well arranged. All this is done by the central path which gives them the sustainer, the quality that Then the sustainer starts going till you become a human being as shown here. In this void, here as carbon, then you move into the void and here you go through all the evolution starting from a fish up to the human level where you become a small man. Once you become the small man, Vamana is called that. First, the man who came on this earth was a small, stretched man. Then a man came who was Parshurama, a very, very pathodon, a very large man, huge man. Two extremes. And then came the man who was in the center. And the leadership of all these evolutions are done by the incarnation of the aspect which is the evolutionary aspect. So the first aspect she creates is of desire aspect, 
when the desire dies, the whole thing is destroyed. And the spectator is watching. Spectator has the desire. As long as the spectator is happy, the play goes on. As soon as he doesn't like the spectacle, he disappears. As soon as he disappears, then the whole show is over. Is for that only spectator, the whole show is there. So this power of desire has to be till the end. When the power of desire is finished, then there is no more show. There is no more spectator, there is no more his power, they all merge together and again become the Parabrahma. Now the other power, as I said, which is the aspect of creation, so the creator aspect is there. One is the one which is the existence and the other side of the existence is the destroyer. And the another aspect is of the creator and the central one is the sustainer, is the protector. The, out of these, this one incarnates only one aspect because it has to give a quality and the leadership. For example, when there was a great flood, then he incarnated, he incarnated as a fish and a dolphin fish, dolphin. I don't know if you know about dolphin or not, but dolphin is a mammal and is a friend of human beings. So he incarnated as a dolphin fish and saved the boat. As you know, there was a boat in which people were saved. He says the boat is the dolphin who incarnated on this earth. One by one he incarnates, then he incarnates as a turtle, four-legged, which comes out of the water to show the fishes that you can come out. Then gradually he incarnates as a quadruped. Like that the incarnations, he comes as a leader. Somebody has to give that confidence. One fish comes and takes them out and others come, they follow them up. As they go on improving, every time there is an incarnation, and between one incarnation and another incarnation, there is a very great time and that is called as Yuga. Like that, these incarnations come on this earth. Plus the incarnations of the primordial be being come in this area, where we can say this is the ocean of illusion and try to save the people from getting too much to that side or too much to this side as I told you yesterday. And that time when they become human beings, then the seekers are born, which are, which are the epitome, epitome of human evolution. Now these seekers are engulfed by forces of in ignorance and these ignorance forces also form entities. They can be devilish because they think why are we not there like a competition setting and they try to retard the progress of the saints. That's why a seeker when he's born, he's attacked from very child. Immediately he's attacked. Even the parents may attack a seeker. They may act through the parents. If not the parents, then the society, the schools. They're all the time attacked 
the people who are attacking may not be aware of it, but they are used as mediums and these people are attacked. And with that attack, when they are absolutely in a mess and they don't know how to save themselves, then another incarnation is specially made, is the one that manifests here. Who is the desired power of God? but is the destroyer part, who is born to destroy these evil forces, to kill them. This is 14,000 years back, the first incarnation of this great lady. She is called as Jagadamba, the mother of this world. She comes in. She says that today is the first day. We celebrated the first day of her incarnation. And that is a very, very important day for Indians because they believe in Shakti and she is the Shakti, that she came on this earth to kill these horrible devilish incarnations who are called as Rakshasas. So this one is represented within us at the heart level, in the centre, in the vertical column and it manifests in the children till the age of 12 years in the sternum and creates antibodies. She creates her army as the antibodies. Till the age of 12 years the children develop those antibodies within themselves and whenever there is a danger, whether it is physical, emotional, or spiritual danger, these antibodies fight. That's why when you are frightened, the sternum starts breathing fast and informs that all the antibodies should join hands to protect the subject. These antibodies are created here. On the left hand side, left hand side of this is the essence of motherhood. If in your childhood your mother had played a role which has given you fear or kind of a frightening experience, then this center goes out. We say the left heart is catching. Sometimes if you are a bad mother also it might catch. The right heart is the one, is that of the father. And the fatherhood is expressed by the leader who came on this earth about 8,000 years back who is called Ashtina. He is not, if you see here, is in the center. So to make him a complete human being, he was pushed onto the right hand side. He is Sri Rama. Sri Rama came on this earth to establish the institution of benevolent king. The political development and the political evolution started from his time. He is the one who gave leadership as a benevolent king, the one who represents God and who is a king. The idea of king related to God came from Sri Ram. But the modern kings are not like that. They have no relationship with God. On the contrary, they are a horrid people. Some of them are nothing but satanic people. 
absolutely satan there. And you can see from the way they lead their lives and they have led their lives before. So the benevolence of Sri Rama is here to be followed by all the political leaders and all the people who are at the helm of affairs. He is the ideal that was created for human beings to run their authority as the head or the loving, compassionate, benevolent leader of the people who has to govern them by making them respect him, by respect. And if human beings create such kings who are not respectable, those who have no human values, those who have no moral courage, those who are selfish, those who are self-centered, then they have nothing to do to be there. So this is the position of Rama, who is the father. So the head of every state has to be the father of his subjects. That's what he has tried to show by his life. So much so that he had to sacrifice his beloved wife, whom he loved so much. But these days, you know how people do for their own children, they'll sell the whole country. In our India, they do it. Here it's just the other way around. Nobody cares for children at all. I mean, nobody knows whose children they are. But in India, it's the other way around, that they will even sell their children, their, their country, for their children. All these two extremes go against the character of Sri Ram. Now, this is the character that was created 8,000 years back. So, I have explained to you all these things. Now, this is the heart. In the heart resides the spirit. The spirit is watching the game of this creation and is watching what is happening to this person, to this person, to this person, to this person. Everybody has got in their heart the spirit, which is watching, is called as the Shetragya, means the one, the knower of the field. He is watching every minute. He knows what to do, where you go, what mistakes you create, he watches. He doesn't interfere. It's only the interference comes from here, from that thing, which tries to give you conscience, which tries to improve you. From here sometimes, the wisdom part, it tries to tell you, be in the center, by punishing you, by showing it is wrong. But he is just watching the game. Let's see how far it goes. He is the knower of your feet. He is the universal being within you. He is the reflection of that God Almighty who is a spectator within you. And His power is this all-pervading power, which has created all this. So to feel this all-pervading power, you have to become the Spirit. All this creation has no meaning if you do not become the Spirit. In the Vedas, the first, the very first stanza says that by reading Vedas, if you do not become with Vida means, Veda, Veda word comes from Vida, Vida means to know. If you do not become the knowledge, then it has no meaning. But knowledge doesn't lie in dancing and shouting and all the monkey tricks that people do. It's no monkey trick there. Knowledge is that you become the Self, you feel the all-pervading power and by which you know everything else. That is self-knowledge and that is what we have to achieve. If you do not want to become your spirit, I am sorry, I have nothing to offer. If you have some other thing in your mind, you can go away from here, but don't no, no use arguing. There should be no argument about it. 
if you don't want to become i have nothing to say i have nothing else to offer or to request i would request you that you become your spirit then we'll talk about it. and when you become your spirit there's a very good book written by adi shankara acharya in the 6th century the one who was the first shankara acharya all these nowadays all of them are horrible ones one of them is now making a big uh, umbrella of gold studded with diamonds imagine is a short fellow i said this umbrella will fall upon him one day <laughs> he is trying to compete with pope and this adi shankara acharya has said that nothing can work it out na yoga na sankhya na all these philosophies are useless it only works out no discipline not by the grace of the mother by the grace of the mother who is the kundalini herself she is the primordial kundalini only by awakening of the kundalini it works out i mean it's so clearly given but you people do not read those books today the name of the goddess ten of them are nothing but the different chakra where she resides in the muladhara she resides in the swadeshthana she resides in the manipura she resides in the uh, uh, what you call this hridaya uh, chakra then she resides in the vishuddhi then into agnya and then to sastra so all these names are given of course it was not so clearly said as it is said today because the time was not there to say but all these things are there how she rises how she breaks all these granthis which are between these two chakras are the granthis is the knot is so clearly given is never given that you start jumping like a monkey or you take out your clothes all this nonsense is not there on the contrary it is said that this is all possession you get bhuta grast means you get possessed by the dead is so clearly given but people don't read these books they jump on to people who have come here to show some sort of a mesmerism and accept it but you are seekers i would request you you are seekers first of all know that you are seekers and don't be deluded by these false things do not waste your energy on these false things you become yourself of course it goes without saying that the change the transformation comes in in your awareness first of all in your awareness not in jumping and non on all these nonsensical things i mean people think that if you become a stupid fellow then your awareness has improved transformed after all after all you are transformed you see you are a sane person you have become stupid you are transformed in any case if you become mad then it is a greater transformation mother says all that transformation we have become mad we are same people we are landed in lunatic asylum we are transformed and also transmutation has taken place because now we are, we wear dresses like lunatic people we behave like lunatic people transformation has taken place it's an ascent of the man you have to ascend your awareness has to ascend and not to descend it's very easy to descend to move on to the left or to the right is not the way but to move here into super consciousness and that one thing one should know should happen that is the knowledge that is the thing one has to get is to awaken these centers within you which are represented on your fingers here seven of these as shown here and then to feel this all pervading power to begin with once it has happened then to know how to discern how to decode how to find out how to improve how to go further first of all get the connection if your car has not yet started what are you doing about it is so simple and such a common sense but i don't know how these people have taken over it. the only problem as i told you before is this that god has given you freedom and that freedom is to be respected but if you go to these people don't you don't ask any questions you do as others are doing just like monkeys 
don't even think why they are doing it. I mean, you see that this is so filthy. Like a gentleman who came to me, who went to a guru, and he was absolutely ruined. I said, how could you do it? You are an Indian. Don't you know that this is not to be done? He said, I just went to see. Just out of curiosity I went there. And then I also started jumping and I got into it. And for five years he was in it, he could not know that he was in it. I said, for Indians they have some wisdom because they have read all these things, they know all about it. How could you do it? They know that unholiness is not the way to God. Now though some of them can give you also an explanation that all you are, you are to be cleansed. And you pay for it, as if you go to some uh, laundry here, you pay for it, put yourself into it, go into some turnings and you become clean. You have to be clean. You must see their life pattern, you see, you must see how they live. The person who cannot even smell a flower, how can he cleanse himself needs a lot of treatment. Flower he cannot. Imagine a man like that who cannot smell a flower. I mean, he's a doomed personality. I would say the, the most beautiful thing that is produced is a flower. How is he going to feel the human flower? How is he going to enjoy? A person who cannot take out his goggles from his eyes and can face people. How can you believe that such a man could be something holy? Any holy person doesn't have this kind of eyes. One has to know that if the person doesn't lead a holy life and a parasite, greedy people asking for money and Rolls Royces and things like that, all such people you think they can be your guru, you have no self-esteem, I should say. They are absolutely devils. But the problem is different. For me the problem is very, very different. Krishna has said, Yada yada hi dharmasya glani rabhavati bharata paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya cha dushkutam sambhavami yuga He says that whenever there is a degradation of the sustenance, then to save the saints and to kill the satanics, I come on this earth. I take the fall. Now the problem is all the saints have got the satanics in their head. My problem is very complicated. I know they are saints. I know they are the ones who are seekers have been for ages. But they are impressed by the satanics and the satanics are ruling. So if in, if the question of killing the samhara of Krishna's comes in. You see, this, even if they are killed, they are in your brain. So how can you think? They have to go out of your brain. The complicated structure today of the seekers is this, that in their brains they have got all the satanic center. They cannot get rid of it. They are so impressed. Yesterday the fellow said, but mother, everything is good. There is nothing like evil. I said, really? Imagine to believe in such a thing that there is no evil itself is such a dangerous situation. Then why do you need discrimination? Go ahead. Whether you go to hell or to heaven, what does it matter? There is no evil. Enjoy your hell. Have a holiday. Christ has so many times said, about the Satan. Not only but he said that the Satan tries to tempt him. He has talked of Satan and still how do you believe that there is no evil? I just can't understand. There is not only evil but the darkness is so great that we are standing at a point so precariously, very precariously that people are more impressed by evil than by good. See how many people we are. Just see for yourself. Here we are, 
for reality, you cannot pay for anything, you get your realization. Fifty percent people have got realization here. But how many people there are? And they have no patience even to sit down. But I have known people. I have been with the Guru for eight years. He is in my heart. The heart is all catching and you are fainting all the time with the Guru being there. It's a very big problem which you should realize. These are all saints. My only concern is to save them. They have very subtle methods of sabotaging, of destroying the work of God. And you should know when you get your realization that you have to become strong pillars of God's work and not to indulge into frivolous, useless, cheap things. But get to it, learn it, master it. You will become your own master. These gurus who have no powers, nothing, they have become gurus and have minted so much money out of you and you are the people who are realized souls and you are so quiet. You should shout at the top of houses and say that these are false people, these are fake people. Christ Himself has said that there will be false and fake gurus. And then people said that, why are you talking against them? He said, the Satan is not going to talk against himself, his house. He said it clearly. And when people tell me, Mother, don't talk against them, I say, I always tell them, I'll talk, not only talk, but wherever it is possible, I'll tell them definitely, I verily say that these are Satan whom I know now for ages, for thousands of years I have known them. Each one of them, all their tricks I know. I know what they do to you. And don't listen to them that they are cleansing you. Let them cleanse themselves and repent so that they don't go back into hell permanently. So here, at this stage of the Mother, she is terrific. She protects. She has many antibodies. Actually, these antibodies were created at a particular time when it was said that there was a Satan who could not be killed by the quadruped and the people who had two legs like human beings. So she created a special type of a Nat, you call that nat? A black thing with six legs and she killed. It. And these antibodies are those with the six legs. And they work it out. They are there and she's the one who protects us. Now coming to the gross level, when a lady is worried about her security which is very common in America, because husbands, if they are flirts, if they have no time for their wives, and all the time they tell the wife that you may have to leave the house, they develop the fear in this area and the disease which is caused by that is breast cancer, which is very common in America, breast cancer. Breast cancer is caused to women who have sense of insecurity. In Sahaja Yoga you can cure breast cancer. It's very easy to cure breast cancer in Sahaja Yoga. Now the combination of this and this gives you asthma. Among men who have asthma, they must look after their fatherhood. Their own father, supposing somebody's father is dead, without the knowledge of the man or the father can possess also. In that case you get this kind of a thing. Surprisingly, recently in London, one doctor, I don't know how, he experimented with a lady who was suffering from anorexia. Her father had died and she would not eat her food. And many of them are like that whose fathers have died they suffer from anorexia. And he said, all right, let us see about your father. Let us do some sort of a ceremony for him. And she started eating all right. 
It's most surprising. It, it came in the papers that he did that. That is how you can cure such women who suffer from the deficiency of a father root. Or maybe we can say if the father possesses you, if the child is thinking of the father all the time, all these things can be cured in Sahaja Yoga, which uh, I'm sure when you will go further in the studies of Sahaja Yoga, you will learn one by one how to cure such people who have these diseases. Now, I think I'll leave these three centers for tomorrow and I'll try to cover it up. But this is the spirit that is still watching. When the Kundalini, this is the seat of the spirit. When the Kundalini rises and she touches that seat, immediately you get connected to the spirit. And the spirit, which is this all pervading power, starts flowing through your hand, as well as you start feeling it outside. The spectator, the witness, who was outside our central nervous system, now comes into our central nervous system and we know everything about it as we start using this power of spirit. If you remember, Christ was touched by some woman who was sick and he felt a power flew to her and this is the same thing. But Christ was different. He was all-pervading power. He was Omkara. That's why he could walk on the water. But about Christ and about Sri Krishna, I'll tell you later on, tomorrow, if you don't mind. I hope I've been able to explain many things to you, but if you have any questions, you can ask me now, and then we'll start the workshop of realization. In any case, tomorrow morning again, I will be available in the hotel. I don't go out anywhere, except for today I have a special occasion. And I would like to attend to you personally. May God bless. If you want to ask any questions, please ask. You are a real questioner every time. Have you found a lady or not for yourself? No. But what I did find is that today, when I last night when I used your picture, today I had for three hours I had no thoughts, and today I had very few thoughts, which is really beautiful. I don't understand what's going on, but it's really not. Good, good. And one thing I felt when you were talking is that I felt a lot of negativity in myself. In you start seeing all that. That's what happens. You start seeing your ego, you start seeing your negativity, you start facing it. Now you are out of it. You are out of yourself. I also feel that in my lifetime I used to have books on black magic and stuff. This is a long time ago. I got rid of them. But I feel that I have a lot of that in me and it's frightening me. I, I think somehow, I don't know how to...